Hey, what's up guys? I'm trying out live streaming, so bear with me, but we're going to talk about how to pick a router and or a mesh Wi-Fi. So I have a few questions that I'm going to go over. Let me change the screen so you guys can see that. Okay, so we're going to start off with what are you using right now? Do you have Wi-Fi dead zones? How large is your home? And is it centrally placed? So all of these things make a difference because if you have a router on one side of your home, you might have Wi-Fi dead zones on the other. Or if you're moving to a new larger home, as an example, and you have to put the router on one side because your modem just so happens to be there, then that's where mesh Wi-Fi is come into play because they're basically designed to get rid of Wi-Fi dead zones. Uh, but if you have a router that's centrally placed and you just got it a long time ago, it's an old router, you can also pretty much upgrade that as well and you can get more coverage that way you could get a better router with more coverage like maybe one of the newer Wi-Fi 6 routers and you could check the square footage that it covers uh, granted you have to take that with a grain of salt um, but it should probably be better than a much older router now all of this stuff uh, makes a difference based on where you are if you have a lot of walls if they're concrete walls if you're on multiple floors all of that stuff makes a difference. The easy answer is to say you should just get a mesh Wi-Fi because getting a mesh Wi-Fi really is designed to get rid of uh, dead zones. That's really what it's designed to do. Now, question two is what are the differences between a router and a mesh Wi-Fi? Well, a router and a mesh Wi-Fi are basically the same thing, essentially. And the way that works is... We'll take the Orbi as an example. So we have the Orbi. Uh, let me hold it up correctly. So we have the Orbi. So this is a router. This is a satellite. So I can actually buy the Orbi and just use this as the router because this actually is a router. It's identical to a normal router you would get from the store. It's, it's exactly the same thing. A mesh Wi-Fi is really just two or more devices. It could be two routers. It could be a router, an extender, or an access point, or a node, or a satellite, whatever the company calls it. Netgear calls theirs a satellite. But it's basically two or more devices acting as one network. So when you take your Wi-Fi device and you connect it to your network, you pretty much walk throughout your home and then you're good to go there. So you don't need to switch or do anything. All of that's handled for you. It's a single SSID, a single network name that you connect to, and you're good to go. So really, mesh Wi-Fis are designed, uh, think, kind of think of them as just like having two routers uh, where they, where it doesn't have to be two routers, but where they basically just expand your Wi-Fi coverage. Now, if you got... So the next question, I'm, I'm jumping ahead already. What are the differences between mesh Wi-Fi's that come with extenders or with multiple routers? So here's the thing. So the Orbi comes with a router and a satellite. So in this case, this satellite actually gives you Ethernet ports, which gives you the ability to connect these to each other uh, through a wire, through an Ethernet cable. And that creates what's known as wired backhaul or Ethernet backhaul. When you connect these to each other via Ethernet, you get the best possible signals on the secondary one. On the main one that's hooked up to your modem, or your router is the one that hooks up to your modem, that one you always get really good speeds because you have a straight Ethernet connection to your modem. But with the secondary one, if it's wirelessly connected, if these are wirelessly connected to each other, usually the secondary one suffers. And I'll get into that a little bit more later. But this satellite actually gives you two Ethernet ports, so you can actually wire these, wire these to each other via Ethernet, which will give you a much better connection on the secondary one. You'll get much better speeds, what I'm trying to say. And if these are wirelessly connected to each other, which you can do, and that's called wireless backhaul, the secondary one, because this has Ethernet ports, you can actually hook up devices using the Ethernet ports on the secondary one which is always a good thing. So that's basically a router and a, and a, they call it a satellite, but you could call it an access point extender. That I see them all as the same thing. Basically a router and a non-router. So we have the Tautronics here, and these are two routers. So basically, 
you get to pick which one you want to connect to your modem and then the other one when you connect it to the network it no longer acts as a router it acts as an access point so uh, and the, the reason is because you only want one router if you have two routers you're technically already making two different networks uh, but with one router you're making one network because the routers have a network address translation which basically they're called routers because they route traffic that's what they do routers basically uh, route traffic within your home devices to the internet or to each other. That's why they're, they're called routers because they're routing data. Um, and, and I've done a whole explanation on this and I'll put a link in the description below once the live stream is done and I can put descriptions down there. I'll put a link in the description below that pretty much explains how home network works fully. And I also have done a whole bunch of reviews on pretty much all these mesh Wi-Fi's and more. But yeah, so the secondary one acts as an access point and you can use, you can, you know, wire these to each other via Ethernet, which is called wired backhaul. Again, that's going to give you the best possible speeds. Or you could just wirelessly connect these to each other where this main router is hooked up to your modem and then the second one is just acting as an access point. Okay, so those are the differences. Oh, and I should also mention that with the Orbi, with the satellite, that's a non-router, you're getting Ethernet ports, but some extenders or access points, like let's just say as an example, the Nest Wi-Fi, if you get a Nest Wi-Fi router and a Nest Wi-Fi point, the Nest Wi-Fi point doesn't actually have Ethernet uh, ports, so you can only hook it up to each other via wireless backhaul. Granted, the cool thing about the Nest Wi-Fi point is it has the Google Assistant built in, which, which is pretty unique. Okay, so question number four is, can you use a mesh Wi-Fi with the router or does it replace it? Well, it's really designed to replace it because, again, this is a router. But you can technically, with some mesh Wi-Fi's, you can actually hook them up to actually uh, connect um, to... I'm like, <laughs> my mind is going blank. Oh, that's right. Uh, so you can actually connect these in access point mode and uh, you can actually connect this to your router and then uh, go to the Orbi, I think it's OrbiLogin.com or it's something around there. Uh, but basically you go to Orbi's options and then you could change the option that you can actually run this in access point mode. So this would basically extend your coverage on your existing router. Now, I personally don't do that, but you can do that because it does give you that option. But not all the mesh Wi-Fi's do give you that option to run, to run as an access point. I think the Asus XT8 also lets you do that. The Mechia Orbi does, but not all of them do. So you can technically, uh, some of them you can technically use as access points and just use them in conjunction with your routers. Or... In my mind, they're really designed to replace it. So that, that's what I recommend doing, replacing it. Okay, well, what if, question five is, what if you have a modem router combo? What do you do? Well, so if you have a modem router combo, what I would do is I would either call your ISP, your internet service provider, and ask them if they could switch it with just a modem. Or what you could do is if you can access that, it's usually you're going to a specific IP address or something like that in a browser and that gives you access to your modem router combo. In there you should probably see an option to put the router in bridge mode which essentially disables it or you could or if there's an option that just says disable you could do that as well. So that's what I would do but again you can technically if you got the Orbi you can technically just leave that alone and then run this in access point mode and it would expand your coverage. This, this router would no longer act as a router. Okay, how do you expand your Ethernet ports? That one you pretty much get an unmanaged switch and I recommend getting at least a gigabit one. And what you, they're pretty much designed to, you plug in an Ethernet port then they give you X amount of Ethernet ports out which you can connect stuff. You don't, if you get an unmanaged one, you can't, uh, well you technically, I don't think you can, but you don't have to, it's just plug and play. Uh, you just plug it in the wall, connect the Ethernet port to any port you want and then just expand your Ethernet ports by hooking up your computer or other devices to the other Ethernet ports. You can also put an Ethernet, uh, put a switch between these. So if you were doing wired backhaul to get the best possible speeds, you can actually go from this to a switch 
uh, even to another switch and then to this as well. So as long as there's an Ethernet connection between them, that gives you uh, a wired backhaul connection. Okay, question uh, seven is, should you get a tri-band or a dual band? And that one is really dependent on if you're going to do wireless backhaul or wired backhaul. Because the differences between tri-band and dual band typically is that tri-bands have three bands, as its name implies, and dual band has two. So dual band has a 2.4 gigahertz and a 5 gigahertz band. Uh, dual bands typically have the same 2.4 and 5, and they have an additional 5. Sometimes it's a 5.8 gigahertz, uh, depending on the mesh Wi-Fi you get. But essentially, in most cases, for tri-bands, the additional band is used solely for the backhaul. Translation, none of the other Wi-Fi devices connect on that additional frequency for the tri-band, so it's not being shared. So a wireless backhaul uh, for tri-band usually gives you better speed. So my internet speeds are around 480 megabits per second down and 24 megabits per second up. And when I get a tri-band router like the uh, Netgear Orbi, I pretty much get full speeds on the secondary one, even if they're wirelessly connected. Now, if I had gigabit internet, I probably wouldn't get full speeds on that because I feel like there is a cap on how fast it can go wirelessly. But on my internet, my internet speeds are 480, and anything below that, you would get full speeds with the Netgear Orbi. Not all of them let you do that. So with the Talotronics, it is a little bit slower than full speeds, even though this one's also a tri-band. Uh, but in most cases, tri-band do better than dual band. And the reason is because Wi-Fi devices are actually not full duplex, which means they can send and receive at uh, exactly the same time without interfering with each other at full speeds. So their Wi-Fi devices are actually shared uh, so when you connect multiple Wi-Fi devices, so if I were connecting two Wi-Fi devices, they would actually start sharing speeds with each other. And I'm not talking about internet speeds, everything, even if you're on Ethernet or Wi-Fi, share internet speeds. But um, Wi-Fi devices uh, with other Wi-Fi devices share internet speeds. So if you're getting... Um, if you're actually looking at mesh Wi-Fis, one of the other things I would look for is they have they're usually rated for a certain number of devices that they can handle on Wi-Fi so that's one thing I would look for um, when I'm buying a mesh Wi-Fi as well and finally should you get Wi-Fi 6 or, or is Wi-Fi 5 okay so Wi-Fi 6 otherwise known as wireless AX is the newest wireless standard um, so typically with Wi-Fi 6 you can go farther and get faster speeds. That's what I've noticed with all my other mesh Wi-Fi's. So my iPhone 12 Pro is a Wi-Fi 6 device. My Pixel 5 is a Wi-Fi 5 device. So with Wi-Fi 6, the farther away I go, that's when it starts to outshine the Wi-Fi 5. But when I'm close to these modems, if I'm in the same room, um, I can't really tell a speed difference between them, assuming I have a great connection. Um, so yeah, so do you need a Wi-Fi 6? No, uh, you could just get a Wi-Fi 5 because also the other thing is actually most of my devices are still on Wi-Fi 5. I only uh, have my phone on Wi-Fi 6 and I recently built a computer, which I will post a video on that as well. But that one also can do Wi-Fi 6, but I have it hooked up with Ethernet. So again, most of my devices are on Wi-Fi 5. Most devices are still on Wi-Fi 5, but if you want to future-proof yourself, then Wi-Fi 6 is the way to go. But if you get a Wi-Fi 6 router and you have a Wi-Fi 5 device, uh, it might work a little bit better than getting a Wi-Fi 5 device with a Wi-Fi 5, but I don't even know if it will work better. Uh, really, to take full advantage, you really need to get a Wi-Fi 6 uh, router and a Wi-Fi 6 device. That's when you're actually going to see a full advantage of it. I don't really think you're going to see an, uh, a full advantage other than that. All right, so with that, I'll leave it up to questions for my first live stream. So I don't actually know how many people are watching right now. Not too many. Uh, so I'll just wait a minute or two and just see how this goes. Again, I'm new to live streams, so 
I didn't schedule this in advance because I was playing with the camera. I actually did one or two test live streams right before this. And uh, yeah, I wasn't sure how well it was going to go. I had some trouble. So I didn't want to schedule something and then it'd be like four hours late or something like that. So that's not because I intention. I actually wanted to uh, do this several hours ago. And it's actually uh, dark outside right now um, by the time I actually did this. So, But if you guys enjoy stuff like this, if you want to leave a comment down below later on, if you guys like this, maybe I could do live streams where uh, maybe I just go on and I just answer uh, questions. And obviously, I'll let you guys know in advance once I uh, figure everything out. Because uh, right now, I'm just using my camera hooked up to my computer and I'm just using the software by I use a Panasonic Lumix GH5 camera and I'm just using their software uh, I, I'll see how this is I might get a capture card later on but one of the other things that I want to do is I reached 5,000 subscribers so thank you guys for that uh, definitely big thank you guys uh, for making that happen um, but I want to give out the Xbox Series S which I said I would do at the end of this month in the community chat but I, I think I'm going to push it to next month once I figured out the game, but I just want to uh, see how I'm going to implement it and if if I can get live chats later on. If, basically, I want to I wanted to also do a live chat to see how this works just to see uh, how I'm going to implement that because I definitely want to give that away. I might start off with the test prize as well, just like some small prize just to try that out. Uh, but in the future, uh, well, that Xbox Series S for sure is going. And in the future, when I hit next milestones, I'm going to get some other consoles. I'm going to give those away as well. So be sure to subscribe if you guys enjoy these types of videos. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I'm not seeing any questions. I looks like I just, yeah, I don't have too many viewers right now watching. Uh, all right. Thank you guys for watching. I'll end the live stream right now.